Well, coming up on today's show, a vacation slash holiday message and the results of our question of the week, how much you spend on driving an EV. Well, good morning, good afternoon and good evening, wherever you are in the world. Hello and welcome to the Sunday, the 2nd of September edition of EV News Daily. It's Martin Lee here with the news you need to know about electric cars as we move towards sustainable transport and talking of wherever you are in the world, where I am right now is, well, sort of TBC, I know roughly, somewhere in the ocean, in the North Sea specifically, not technically an ocean, it's, well the North Sea, for those that don't know, the bit of water between the UK and the rest of Europe, it's quite a bit of uh, of water, and I'm heading to Norway right now, and I've just found 20 minutes to come and have a chat to you uh, in the cabin right now, it's kind of a, um, a quiet couple of hours on board, and so I thought I'd come and have a look at what you've been saying, the results of this week's question of the week, and have a little squeeze through my emails. The question of the week set every week by myev.com and thank you to help uh, for them uh, for helping make this show. They've built the first marketplace specifically for buying, selling and learning about EVs in North America only at the moment. But go check it out if you want to have a look at what they are doing. Well, uh, like I say, heading to Norway uh, where it's uh, sunny and calm on the water at the moment. About uh, 17 degrees Celsius and if you are listening to this, it means that the world's slowest satellite internet finally woke up and I got it uploaded. It's been a struggle. Well, first of all, let me look back at the question of the week. Last week, and it was I was asking you, the, the community and the audience of this show, about your EV experiences, mainly because so many people listen to this program who are EV curious and they want to know... Actually, if I have an electric car and I charge it at home, what's it going to cost me? So we, we were reaching out over the last seven days to the owners of EVs already. And we'll set a question at the end of this show aimed the other way round. But for now, let's have a look at the answers that you were giving about what it costs you. Hello, first of all, to David. Now, David Allen is a partner of this podcast on Patreon. David, thank you so much for supporting Uh, the podcast on Patreon as a podcast partner. David Allen says this, the question about increase in electricity misses the whole picture. Your electric bill will go up, but your gas slash petrol bill will go down. For instance, my family drove 28,916 miles last year using 9.8 megawatt hours of electricity. That means I used about $1,000 More electricity above my household needs, says David. But to drive the same distance on gasoline, I'd have burned 904 gallons. Average cost, he says, $2.28 a gallon. Cheap compared to the UK. (laughs) And that means his whole utility bill, while it was 25% higher, his fuel bill for cars went to zero. So a net saving for David of $983 over the year. A $1,000 saving just for driving an electric car. Well, Scott's chipped in as well, and Scott Callahan is an exec producer of this show, again on Patreon. Thank you very much, Scott. Says, I wanted to drop you a quick note regarding a couple of topics, which go hand in hand. Firstly, question of the week, driving an EV and charging at home. He says, I purchased a 2015 Smart 4.2 EV in June of this year. Uh, during the month of August, I used just over 55 kilowatt hours charging my car at home. At our current rate of nine cents per hour, that cost me just over five dollars but here's the best part my local electric utility offers a personal ev discount rider which lowers the amount i pay per kilowatt hour to about a third of the usual rate from 9 p.m in the evening to 5 a.m the following day wow scott that's so cool here in the uk the it's about seven hours of cheap rate overnight but yours is way longer 9 p.m to 5 a.m and he says thanks to the rider we've seen our power bill actually drop by 30% over the last three months, all thanks to the electric Smart 4.2. I enjoy the show each day. Keep up the great work and spreading the news about the benefits of going green. Thank you, Scott, and thank you very much for your support. I really couldn't do it without the Patreon support. Well, Philippe Calve is a supporter of the podcast as well, and he says, for your weekly question, it cost me $350 per year to do 20,000 kilometres. I pay $0.08 per kilowatt hour tariff of uh, hydro, So lots of renewables in Quebec, he says, which is also very cheap. Hello to George Rowe, who drives a 2017 Renault Zoe 
ZE40. Drives less than 200 miles in a typical week when I'm at home and just doing a little driving around town. He says, one full charge is sufficient. If I charge at home, costs me £6 and I'm travelling longer distances or parked in a city centre. I use public charging stations, says George. Where I live in the north of Ireland, they are free to use. So the total impact of my electricity bill would be about £25 a month if I didn't have access to the free chargers. Still cheaper than buying petrol. Well, Barry Wolf sent me an email to say that I spend about 20 to $25 a month to charge my e-golf. My town's electricity supply is 100% renewable, mostly from wind. The town provides no time-of-use plans, so I pay the Tier 2 cost of 19 cents per kilowatt hour since I exceed the 300 kilowatt hour uh, per hour Tier 1 amount every month. Now, he says my total electricity bill did go up since I ditched petrol, but my other electrical drawers cost about $40 to $50 a month, so my bill is reasonable, says Barry. I've looked into solar, but with my current electrical spend, it doesn't make sense right now. Thank you so much for that comment. Yeah, I've done the same, actually, Barry. I've looked at PV on the roof, and kind of, I'm kind of borderline, and at the moment, it doesn't make sense, but we've just moved house, so I want to do some features very soon about getting the new uh, charger put in to the new house. And we, so because we just moved house and we're going to be there, we think long term, this is kind of our maybe not forever home, but it's a dream home for us. So, yeah, all of a sudden PV makes the return over 10 years starts to make a bit more sense. We're really heavily looking into that. And so I want to get my friend uh, Phil Roberts, who supports this podcast, back on very soon to talk to us about how those costs have been coming down over the years. Uh, Daz, hello to Daz, Daz Sant has been talking to us for a while on the podcast. Hi, Martin. As a two-EV family, we've seen no noticeable increase in our electricity bill. We have a 30-kilowatt and a 22-kilowatt Zoe. Both get charged mostly once a week. I make most of local free charging and a Polar subscription. So if you don't know know what that is in the UK, that is uh, one of the big charging networks over here. We'll charge you, I think it's seven ninety nine. <laughs> I might be wrong, I haven't looked it up uh, in a little while. And uh, you get unlimited charging at nearly all of their posts when you go to them uh, for paying that flat rate. Carlos Walker has chipped in with this to give you another data point for your weekly question of the week. He says, I live here in Costa Rica and have a second-hand 2013 Nissan Leaf. My average energy consumption at home, excluding the few distances I use public charges, is 117 and a half kilowatt hour. Since I charge at night, we have a tiered rate in Costa Rica. Uh, the average is about eight dollars seven ninety five on electricity every single month to do his transportation. Carlos, that's amazing. Having a look at some of the uh, other emails and YouTube comments, Gaddy says, Hi, Martin. Great show. We listen to it every day. I'm happy to tell you that in Quebec province, where I live, electricity is cheap and it's clean. 90%, uh, 97% of energy there comes from hydro and costs me 35 cents a month to plug in my car every single night. Alan Boothby. Hello, Alan. Thank you very much for your comment today. Who says... I listen to EV News on my daily commute. These are my facts and figures. Second-hand 2014, uh, 24 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf for him. Bought it in December 17. Has saved me a great deal of money, he says, over my old Mazda, which I was getting 35 miles to the gallon. May mileage was 1,300 miles and cost about £40 in electricity versus 214 on the gas. June mileage was just over 1,000 just over £30 cost. Petrol would have been about 200 July mileage, 1300 Electricity, 40 quid. Petrol cost would have been 220 Plus, of course, no road fund license, low servicing, perfect for my daily needs, says Alan Boothby. Well, a quick look at other comments. Arnis says, I'm a leaf owner. Over three years, used 18 megawatt hours of energy. Uh, it's over 91,000 kilometers, though. Wow, you've been driving a lot. And he says, with my heavy foot and cold winters, uh, the leaf actually consumes 20 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Uh, 10 uh, euro cents per kilowatt hour for me, he says. Uh, that's two euros every 100 kilowatt hour uh, every 100 kilometers so the, the story we're seeing here if you're ev curious if you're thinking what it's like these are people right that have been monitoring their usage sometimes daily weekly monthly yearly some of them have got meters on their charge points they know exactly what their car has taken and some people even keep spreadsheets of exactly what their car is costing them the story we're seeing here over and over again is just how much cheaper it is to drive an ev over gas 
Right, a couple more comments, though. Let's go to Cincinnati, Ohio, where Brian Carter says, when it costs me eight cents per kilowatt uh, hour in Cincinnati, $1.45 to fully charge at about 19 kilowatts, down uh, from 24 kilowatts with a bit of di- battery deg, he says. You must be talking about a Nissan Leaf. Yes, he is. I can see it here. A 20, 2011 Nissan Leaf is what he drives, 24 kilowatt hour. Uh, my estimation is we're playing the third of a price of gas. Gary Wyatt Williams. Hello, Gary. Says, regards to running costs compared to the previous gas guzzler, under a fiver per week, down from uh, £55 per week for the old gas guzzler. £200 a month, that means you're saving, Gary. Wowzers! Brian Weatherall says, hi, Martin. When I went EV three and a half years ago, I noticed quite quickly my energy bill went up by 20 to 30 pounds but and it was quite a shock he says uh, being a dad already paranoid about the lights being left on and the fridge doors being left open ah you're a proper dad turn those lights off <laughs> i love it uh, but i had to remind myself i was spending 190 pounds a month on diesel says brian before now it's settled into a predictable 20 pounds and i often i charge often he says at my employers for a pound a pop uh, maybe only plug in at home two to three times a week and cover seventeen thousand miles a year you're a long distance sir Twenty thousand miles on a year for you uh, well done sir ron superjet i love some of these usernames coming up by the way ron superjet says i've done ten thousand miles in my leaf at a cost of 148 pounds i do my charging at home most of it is done for free at nissan dealers and supermarkets hit stirrer careful how i say that hit stirrer <laughs> says question of the week uh, when i got the leaf my bill went up i'm pleased to report it didn't go up by very much at the same time i retrofitted the whole house with led bulbs and because of that uh, with the plus and minus they cancelled each other out Airheart one spends between zero here we go what's this story i spend between zero and fifteen dollars a month ah and this is why he has a model s with free supercharging and that account he says for 70 percent of my charging 20 percent is done for free at my place of work so 10 percent is done at home that's an interesting story actually that's an interesting way of looking at it uh, in terms of i didn't ask specifically about what car you drive but that's the first one i think i've seen from someone with um grandfathered in supercharging with a uh, with their tesla jujitsu boy 730 Hello, Jiu-Jitsu Boy 730. In Seattle, I spend $3. That's nothing, is it? $3 a week to charge my Fiat 500e for the past 1.5 years. I had my long-range Model 3 about three weeks now, done 1,800 miles. and It's about six US dollars a week so far. He's comparing it to what his old VW Jetta with a 1.8 turbo engine uh, would get. Uh, about uh, four dollars uh, per gallon in seattle and that would get him about 28 miles so saving a ton of money damien davis says my husband and i both own a bmw i3 rex we've owned them for about two years his fuel costs when he drove the ford escape slash cougar were about 350 dollars a month now his commute costs 30 to 40 dollars wow we're seeing all of these stories of people saving so much money and going why didn't i do this sooner Hello to Future Systems 738. I spend an average of under $2 a day charging our car on night rate off-peak power, much less than what I would spend on petrol. Hello to Chris Marshall. I have two EVs, says Chris Marshall. Now, Chris has a 24-hour, 24-kilowatt-hour leaf and a 15-kilowatt-hour per show Ion. Don't he see many of those around uh, for almost three years now, he says. Also charged at home on Economy 7. And while the domestic electricity bill must have increased... I haven't noticed it. He says total outlay for transport has dropped massively compared to two diesel cars. And finally, final story. And by the way, I know this has been 15 minutes, but I really appreciate everyone for taking part in telling us your story, how detailed, how granular you've got with this. Because I think this is this could be this podcast for a few people who are EV curious, who are just on the tipping point. I reckon if you've put your story in this week you've definitely tipped someone over. I reckon they're putting the order in tomorrow because they're hearing these stories and going, you know what, I'm long-term, let's play the long game, I'm going to save money. John Riley says, initially, our electric bill went down slightly as we moved to Economy 7 and reaped the benefits of our 2.75 kilowatt solar system. That was four and a half years ago. Now, says John, it's difficult to tell as we're now fully EV, covering 26,000 miles in our 24 kilowatt hour Leaf and 40 kilowatt hour Zoe. But we are paying £140 for gas and electricity. I mean, he means uh, natural gas heating, uh, not petrol gas, uh, on a four-bed house with ecotricity, which he says is good. It's less than what our petrol bill for two cars would have been for that mileage. And on a side note, we got PV when the fit 
profit was high, and that covers our household energy bills uh, for the year. John, I'm very envious of you. Many years ago in our last house, we had an old, we used to live in an old Victorian cottage, and it had this south-facing slate roof. So nothing on it at all. And the roof was shot, shot to bits, needed replacing. And we had to put a new roof on it. And it was when the Fit Tariff first came out and why I didn't put solar on that roof and that and then get locked in to the original Fit rate. Uh, feed, fit, by the way, is feed in tariff if you're not in the UK. And the government, and that's come right down now, but years ago, the government used to pay you for the amount of electricity that you put into the grid from your own solar system. And although those rates are stepping down and down and down, they're ending next year. Uh, they've been on the way down for years. If you were one of the first ones and got the first rate, it was incredibly optimistic. And actually, if you didn't use much at home during the day, uh, you could make a bit of money out of it, actually, the way it worked out. Uh, And that all got killed off. Sadly, I won't get into politics here. However, well done to those people who made a few quid, actually, about having some PV on their roof. And congratulations to them for having the foresight. And I, (laughs) I didn't at the time. Didn't think it through enough. Thank you to everybody for those questions of the week. I know there were more. I'm sorry I couldn't get to them all. I think I've covered uh, most of the emails and YouTube off. I've probably missed out some Facebooks in there. I know that lots of people read your messages. Well, if I haven't read them out, they've certainly been received by the readers uh, in the community. Thank you very much to myev.com for setting our question of the week. And here is the new one. Are you ready? Right. Here is the new question I want your comments on. Facebook, YouTube, email, all a good place to do it. Uh, The question is this. China has reached a million EVs. Europe just reached a million EVs. And very soon, USA will hit a million EVs. So what's stopping you? If you don't own an electric car yet, what is stopping you? And if you are an electric car owner, what stopped you before you bought one? Because there was a time when you said no, there was a time you said yes. So, what stops you buying an EV? Whichever way around you are, tell us your story. I'd love to hear from you. We'll try and get as many on a week's time next Sunday. uh, We talk about our question of the week. And it's fast becoming my favourite bit of the week because it's where you take control of the podcast and uh, we, we hand it over to you, the Patreon supporters and the listeners of this show. Thank you very much to all 74 patrons of the podcast whose generosity, frankly, means I get to make this show and uh, pay for all the costs that 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 come with it and thank you very much for uh, those who support us at patreon.com slash ev news daily phil roberts who i mentioned earlier we're looking forward to getting phil back on very soon and talking to us more uh, about some solar and pv stuff hello to uh, cesar trujillo hello to david allen sasha pallenberg who we we're talking about earlier this week actually because we were uh, chatting about some of his tweets to us hello to damien louis hopkin ashley hill Yard Fuchstack, Chris Benson, David Partington, David Prescott, John Bailey, John H. Mayer III, John Timmis, Marcel Lohman, Marcel Ward, Martin Croft, Matthew Ellis, Matthew Gruby, Neil E. Roberts, Paul Seeger Smith, Philippe Calvay, Rod James, Scott Callahan, and the Limousine Line Company. Thank you very much to all of those. You can listen to all previous 228 episodes of this podcast for free, all on iTunes, all on the usual places, iTunes, YouTube, TuneIn, Stitcher. There's a blog at evnewsdaily.com. They're not all recorded in the cabin of a boat bobbing up and down in the middle of the North Sea on its way to Norway. If you subscribe, you get all the podcasts first and free and automatically. There probably won't be one for another day or so while we get off. Uh, Bergen is where I'm heading to. First of all, have a little mooch around, um, have a look for uh, kind of the EV community there, and I shall report back hopefully in the next couple of days Uh, so apologies for the first time in 230 odd shows it's the first break we've taken so i hope you'll forgive me i hope uh, hope there's enough goodwill in uh, in the tank uh, that i can take a couple of days off to do this in the meantime if you could leave a little review uh, maybe about the question of the week and what you think of it that'd be fantastic on all the usual places and in the meantime i think i've got some roaming on the mobile Uh, if you want to try and catch me on the socials uh, facebook linkedin and twitter i'll try and stay up to date with that just search ev news daily Uh, and you'll find me. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you soon.